Come on, let's go. That's black stuff. That is very black. That there is probably the dirtiest oil I've ever seen in a yoke. And I've serviced a lot of vehicles. It's nearly tar. It hasn't been changed in a long time. There's a cord tying up this other hydraulic filter or whatever it is. I'm gonna have to address that and see what the hell that is. There's a bit I'm looking forward to. I'm just trying to get this filter off. The problem is, I don't know if we can get at it with a wrench. Mm, and this ram here is pouring down hydraulic oil on top of me as it work. These are the simplest buys. They're all right for certain types of filters. I've also got a chain, which I probably will have to use. Let's we'll see what we do here. I've got it. I've got a grip on it anyway. Yeah. There we got you. There we got you. These are very handy. Covered in oil doesn't make them any handier, but they are handy. There we are. Well, let me tell you, that filter you're looking at there, now there is a bit of oil in it, not much, but that there weighs a ton. Um, well, not just a ton, but you know what I mean. It's very heavy, it's far heavier than it should be, so it's obviously probably full of dirt. And look at the top of it here and everything. Anyways, we're gonna replace it, like for like, a new filter here. Normally, I'd rub the two filters together, but because that stuff looks like pure tar, I'm gonna put some fresh oil on it. No need to get a wrench to them or nothing like that. Doesn't need it. Just hand tighten as best you can and that's good enough. Now, there's a question of what oil do you put into it? Um, I was looking at different places, looking on forums and things, and I was talking to Massey dealership. You can put 10W30 or you can put um, 15W40. It's your choice what you want to put into it. Um, I'm putting in Massey Ferguson oil here. You can see <laughs> there's a can. It's well faded and it's got a rusty lid on it, but I'm only after opening it and breaking the seal on it. I just had Massey oil here, so I might as well use what I have. Quite awkward with the loader. I'm just going to have to work around it somewhere or other. All right, so I'm doing something I've never did before. I'm letting the oil back out of it again. The dipstick looked dark black when I put it in, and true enough, I've run the machine for about 15 minutes, let it get nice and warm, and I'm after dumping the oil, and the oil is jet black again. Real bad looking stuff. So I might have to do it a third time, just to flush the whole thing out, because that there, that is toxic looking stuff. I'm gonna run it next time for about a month more, I give it a good running and then I'll change it again. All right, so it's the next day. First job in hand this morning. We're gonna address these diesel filters. There's two of them here, one and two. And there's also this by here, which is just an inline filter coming straight from the tank. Oh, it's actually not tight either. Stick that there. I'll be liking the bottom of it, oh yeah. It's not actually that bad. It's probably a lot worse. Let's drip for a minute. I can see the top of it here. Well, I can still see the separations, but I can see a lot of rusty stuff in between it. There's an o ring in here as well that we need to get. Use a pick just to get it out. There we go. It actually looks okay, but yeah, you should change it anyway. It comes with a kit and your new filter, so it'd be pointless leaving it in there. Just pops on like that. So there is that all cleaned out now and just stick on our new seal. And one final thing is to slip in a new seal. There's just a little void for it to fit up into it. Be careful you don't twist it. That's it. That's one filter done. Now do the very same on the other one. That filter there is actually fairly clean. I don't see any major problems with that. It looks an old filter, but it, yeah, it's relatively clean. This is a little bolt that goes down to the filter itself. It's got an O-ring on it. This one here is very hard, so it's time to change it. Most kits you will get with a filter, you'll come with a new one of those. And this one actually comes with a new washer as well, so we'll put it all on it when it's here. There's our new washer. Our two diesel filters are now on. But now I'm after removing the pipe from the bottom of this inline filter. 
and we have a brand new one of those to put on and I need to do it quickly because the tap on the tank is not completely stopping the diesel from coming down so I'm gonna have to take it off and do it with a kind of running like that here is our new one here just a different type of filter the one has got a kind of a media paper style filter inside this one's just like a mesh so you'll see an arrow on them you can see the arrow on that one there and that means your diesel is going that way so this end will be facing the tank right now it's just a matter of getting this by off yeah oh she's full of goodness that thing you can actually see how much quicker the diesel is flowing so you can see how much this was holding the diesel back i'm gonna stick this new one on real quick that's that one that filter there i don't know if you can see it but you see all the sediment built up there when i changed it and put in the new one i could already see the difference in flow going straight through the new one them inline filters there they're cheap as chips by putting one onto an old machine like that which has a steel tank which likely would be full of dirt which this one is it actually left that the main filters were clean so it saved a lot of that dirt from going through into the main filters um it was well restricted there definitely <laughs> was one thing that really needs to be done. It's finished now, the next thing we have to do is bleed the system. Is when you're filling your filter full of diesel, air has to come out to make room for that diesel, so by opening this, it will let that out. Otherwise, it would just sit there and be air locked. And there's a filter actually full of diesel already, which is a great thing. Just give it a quick pump, make sure. Yeah, that one's all right. It'll be the next one, probably be the important one. There's no air in that. It was air there for a little while. You could hear it gushing out, but that there to me, that's full. Okay. So this is our injector pump here. And on your injector pump, you have these little guys here, one top and one bottom. It's great if you had two people doing this, but we're gonna pump it from the far side and you let me know when the air is finished coming out. flowing all right i'll do the top one now just for the crack of it sometimes if an open end a wrench doesn't work this will yeah so we're going to bleed this one and hopefully when we've this done it will start okay the next thing will be will it run without air locking I hope I haven't to go into them injectors again. They're a bit of a fiddly thing to get in. That, there's the four of them there, gonna cross. Look, if I have to do it, I have to do it, but I'd rather not, if I can get away with it. Now, before I start up, my dash looks a bit worse for wear. A lot of the panels is in there, laying on the ground. That's because I'm rewiring this tractor digger um, at the minute, and there's a lot of rewiring to be done, but I've actually done quite a bit. I've ordered a lot of stuff as well. Behind there looks dirty more than anything, but actually the wires themselves are quite good. It's just a lot of the switches and stuff are badly corroded. I'm not changing any of the, the dials yet until I see or make sure they're not working. I'll have to test each one of them. I got a new rev cable for here, a new RPM cable. I am working on that as well, but she still should start. <laughs> about 10 minutes, well, five minutes, just to make sure that it would continue to run. Because what can happen is, it can run until the fuel is in the line here, and then you get an air bubble that comes, and then it just stops. She's just run there for about 10 minutes, got warmed up, and she did an airlock, which was great. Um, so that's that job done. And there's also no leaks, no more leaks, coming from anywhere I can see on the diesel uh, line. The one thing I do notice, well, it seems to have stopped, but I copped it a day or so ago, was when it sits for a while, this seal here on the manual primer pump seems to be gone. What's next to do? Where do you start? Well, I have a box full of parts in there, and one thing sitting on the top of the box when I looked was a set of lights. So the lights are for here, and for here. There's an extensive amount of wiring to be done. I want to just show you something else as well. 
in here you'll see I have the battery disconnected I always keep it disconnected on these old vehicles because they can go up like a match but this thing here it's all cable tied now and fixed up but that wire there that's the main loom going to the back there's not a lot of electrics on this um, but that's probably just supplying power to the lights mainly the outside of that look like this see you in a brighter light you see the way that's all charred and it's very brittle as well just cracks in your hand so instantly when i seen it i said to myself ah oh, christ there must be a short the whole wires all melted but when i opened it up the wires underneath were absolutely perfect there wasn't a single problem with them so i don't know what caused it but i stripped it back as far as i can i put a brand new um loom proper loom cover on it and i also used that uh, fiber tape across that just to hold the whole thing together to me the outside of it got warm for some reason it's like someone was maybe using a blow torch or something on the floor maybe they were trying to burn off these nuts i just don't know but something overheated at some stage and it wasn't the wires from down underneath thankfully good old flatheads gotta love them these are not original lights you can see there now the state of that inside there's nothing pretty about that, all corroded as well. No, they weren't going to work. Right, so they held on with lovely tap and screws. Oh dear, you have a lot of corrosion in here. And the corrosion is basically down to this rubber holding moisture behind it. Just as I'm doing this, I'm going to disconnect the indicator wires first. And I said disconnect. I'm going to cut them. I'm going to do that. I'm just going to put a yellow cable tie on it. That's going to tell me that's indicator. There we have it. There is one crap light gone. Right, I'm not trying to save this one either, so I'm just going to cut it off. I haven't got any steel, but I'm going to go and get some steel. I'm just going to cut that section there out completely. And hopefully, I can patch in a new piece. Jeepers, we're not far off. Well, there is a saying if in doubt, cut it out. Well, that's no different here. The only problem is, I think when you do that kind of work, you kind of well, you leave the warranty invalid. It's a new day and it's a lot colder today, so it is. But the job in hand is we're going to actually build two new housings for this light. So I was going to repair the old ones originally. Um, where's the old back plate there that goes behind that covers the wire? But you know what, the amount of time I'd have to put in to repair on this guy here and they still not be right. It's really, really light. That is as light as a feather. There's nothing in it. And it's not that the fact that there's rusted, it's just there was nothing probably in it from day one. And that's the reason it rusts so easily. But the bottom's gone, the middle's gone, here's gone. So what do you do with it? It's not worth replacing. So, Bailey, give me a second. She had a haircut, by the way. She's looking a lot younger. Every time I get a haircut, I seem to look older. But we've got a bit of sheet metal here. A little bit heavier than what was on it. And we're gonna build two of these from scratch. Now, the way I've done it at the moment is I've already traced our line here. You can see it, sorry. The winter sun always casts a shadow. But there is a line there, which was just traced out by this guy here. I'm gonna trace another one out here to duplicate it. And all I'm going to do is going to run the grinder around that and that's going to give me my base plate and then we'll build our housing around that. And I want this piece to do the whole thing so we don't want to waste that. And that's one dead battery. I just need to cut off the ends here. Get a circular side.
So that's our base. Alright, so our light is going to sit here. Reflector is going to sit there. Hmm. But this is the idea here. So I'm going to start there. And I really want it to sit out like that. So if I'm anyway right, I should be able to pull a line across here. And I should be able to bend this in the vise with two planks of wood. And if I bend it just right, and it comes in and touches that on the bottom, it means I only have to put a weld here and a weld here. And that'll be the piece done. It'll probably not work for me. I'll have a look on it as well. But I'm going to give it my best shot. 45 mil. There. That should be our bend line. Right, so here we are. We have it mounted with two pieces of timber either side. I don't think this will work. Um, I think our timber will either crack or our steel won't bend. I don't know. We're going to give it a go. I really should be using two pieces of steel now when I think about it because I'm going to heat this up and uh, the timber's going to burn. But look, let's see what happens. If you look there, it looks all right. It doesn't look too bad. This is our face plate now. We'll run this wire in here. I'm gonna stick on our new LED light. And then we just get our reflector, which will sit there. And that should be our new unit finished. One thing I have to do as well is I have to gain access here to tighten the two nuts and the same with the reflector so I'm going to have to come at it from the far side and I'm going to have to drill two holes here just so you can put in a wrench and tighten them from behind and the same with the reflector and so if you're going to change the light you'll take this off first and you do it all from this side. Best way to drill them holes is just drill straight through. One. Just stuck it on to see what it looked like before we paint it. Now it's not completely bolted down there yet. I've only two bolts here on the top holding it and the light's not even fixed in right. But it shows you what it'll be like when it's done. So, here we're back three days later. And we have them painted now in Massey Ferguson Industrial Gloss Yellow. So we'll put our light on first. Uh, I'm going to put it through this hole here because there's holes already on the other panel is on the, the digger so I'm just going to work with that we have our reflector here stick that on so that's them done and just to give you a comparison there's the old one if you can see it and I think it was probably the best way of going about it because it would have looked rough I would have never got them perfect and that stuff is just tin, that's all that is. Well, these are good and heavy. Three times, four times the weight. One little pain in the back side, but these particular LED lights, nearly no wire coming out of the back of them, far too short, so I've had to extend them. Now, I always solder, as I said, I was soldering there a minute ago, and then I just put shrink wrap over it. But I also add that tape there, fabric tape, because if you've got a little sharp piece of steel or copper wires in the solder, when you shrink wrap it, that will pierce through the shrink wrap. That's found that dozens of times when I be wiring. So if you put a little coating of this over it, it'll stop that from happening. I'll put some of this stuff here on the ground. Over that, the whole way in here, just to protect the wire. So nothing can rub against it because it has to come through and in through this guy as well. I'm not painting that because it's behind the wheel. And if you started going into paint and everything, you'd never be done. That's that. Just hold it in place so it doesn't slide forward so it's just a matter of bringing it across the wire now the whole way down 
that's rain. So I need to put on this force light. I already have this cleaned down with some brake cleaner, as clean as you can get it. I'm gonna run a bead of silicone the whole way around it just to use as kind of instead of this. This is an old hard piece of stuff and it's gone hard. It probably was rubber at one stage, but I don't like it. It holds the moisture behind. So if I can silicone just the top end the whole way around, leave the bottom end open, that would mean anything that sits behind still has place to get out. Um, that is bound to be better than this. So there is it more or less fitted. One little problem was I can't tighten this bolt on the bottom. Now when I took this off, it was just gutter bolts, so I just cut them off. I never paid much remarks on what was behind. But the problem is, there was nowhere here to get at the nut on the end of it. So I'm after taking out the drill, the core bit again, and just drill the hole straight through it. I don't know, can you see that? So there's the hole straight through it, and that allows me just to get in with my fingertips, get a nut onto the end of it and get it tightened. That's them done, and they're all sealed there now and bolted on. I have to wire it, that's the only thing. Uh, I don't want to wire anything just yet, because I want to see what way the power supply is, because there's no power at all in the dash in there. So that's the reason I couldn't show you on the front lights the last day, all the horn working. But I promise, the next video, hopefully, I can get power to this machine, and if I can, I'll get all the lights working. I do have to replace the two lights above as well. Them lights is completely toast i can see from here they're all rusted inside so i'll put either a single light on both sides or i'll put a double light small light maybe similar to what the size of that one there is so you can angle them different ways sort of what's on the massy up there at the top if you see it and um, just helps when you're working with a yoke not that i intend to do much night work with this but you never know when you have good lights it's hard to beat the front needs to be fully replaced and um, all above that windscreen needs to be replaced so we cut that piece out, so we need very light stuff. And we weld in a heavier piece, which will actually help to reinforce the roof as well. That in itself is causing a lot of the water that's coming in and dropping down on the dash. The rest of the roof inside isn't leaking at the minute. Probably will eventually, but it's not at the minute. And that there is the biggest problem. So we can get that sealed up. Of course, get the door back on, and that'll make a big difference. And we have an LED style light like this that sits on is slightly different the way it fits so we'll have to build some sort of a protective housing for that and then the big job starts where we'll have to pull off boat rams on both sides because there four of them are just leaking real badly especially this one here it's just running out of it as quick as you can put oil into it it's running out of it so we can't use it because of that and this one here is i don't think repairable it's not worth it i have to cut this to take this off and i'm just gonna take that ram off i'm gonna look for a replacement i think I might have one sourced. I know a guy in Cork messes me and he has one and a window for the far side, but it's just a matter of getting it delivered and getting it, especially the last delivery without it being broke. Having all four of those resealed will make a huge difference. It'll mean the aisle will actually stay in it. <laughs> That's the biggest problem I'm having. And then the mother load, which is this yoke here. One way or the other, we'll get it solved and we'll get it working because. I'm looking forward to using it next summer. And the more I work on it, the actual more I like it. Before I end today's video, I was just actually looking at the hedges and the amount of berries that are on the black thorn hedges especially. And you know what, normally I'd come in and have my hedges cut by now. And this year delayed me because of bad weather. Now it is quite windy, so I'll stand behind this tree again. <laughs> There's an old pipe that my father used to actually have doing the same job as this one here, bringing electric from one side to this side past that tree and there it is growing in the middle of the tree now it goes to show you how long that pipe is in does it come out the far side not quite but i guarantee it goes right into there but then anyway, it's a great handle for me to hold on to here because i'm standing in muck but yes i didn't get any trimming done yet i'm not in any panic at all actually i don't mind if i don't do it to december january i don't care because Fields are wetter now than they'd ever be all winter, so it makes no difference. If I was going to do anything, it'd be road work anyway, so I can do that any time of the year. But just when I see the berries on the hedges as they are there now, I'm kind of glad I'm not doing them because the boards will eat a lot of them now in the next couple of weeks, and 
they'd all fall off and hedges are much easier to cut believe it or not in December January anyway when the whole greenery has gone off them so so I'm not in any panic whatsoever so I just moved down here to block this wind but I want to say a couple of things really really fast before we end today's video very important and um, any of you that remember when we done one of our farm visits which was the robotic farmer back last year and um, lovely people they were just so nice to me when I went down and very genuine but their son Parik um, sadly was diagnosed with a brain tumour and it was a huge shock to them I've been talking to John back and forth and you just know even on the words that it's devastating for them why wouldn't it be any parent you'd never wish in your wildest dreams that that could happen to one of your kids and um, but the good news is he has had surgery he's actually the last update I got was he's making a little bit of a return to school which is great so today Parik we send you our best wishes uh, directly to you and this video is dedicated to you young chap and hopefully your full recovery next part i want to do is mention actually three youtubers and they haven't asked me to do this this is fully just down to my own doings and um, one is the sheep shepherd gay and carry a dad and son working together and they don't always get on they have their bickering back and forth and it reminds me of what went on here and what goes on a lot of farms and you'll enjoy that and um, just real down to earth and um, sheep farmers the talking about getting cattle now too so yeah good one to check out so the next one is another Irish farmer these are all Irish channels by the way we have to support our own home country first so Declan is the face behind I do agree set up I think around the same time as myself uh, he had work and commitments as well at the beginning but he's starting to actually post a lot of videos now and he does a lot of mechanical stuff and fabrication which I admire him for so super interesting go and check him out and lastly is a young lady who's doing an awful lot for girls in agriculture I'm the father of five girls in case you didn't know that they watch her and I can see the inspiration she gives them and no doubt she's given it to all the ladies are in agriculture at the moment there's more ladies now hopefully than there ever was before um, and that is Karen Minahan and um, go and check Karen out she's a very hard-working girl works off the farm full-time job I think and then she comes back and does the work whenever she can on the farm and her circumstances with her dad and things um, you know not easy but yes doing great things for women in agriculture so go and check her out and finally on my own channel I want to say a big thank you on behalf of my family and myself because the support unreal and it just has grown and grown and grown we have simplified our channel an awful lot in the past year or so and I'm really found what I want to do with it the stuff that I'm actually interested in myself and once you like doing something as I said before you'll enjoy it more and maybe it comes across better but I can certainly see the interactions whether it's likes comments or whatever it is have certainly went up and um, I don't know why because we've took away actually the like and subscribe stuff that normally goes on YouTube it's all gone basically back to bare bones and just showing the work end of things and yeah I really appreciate the support and it doesn't go unnoticed and it does drive us forward to hopefully keep this thing going for another wee while anyway guys thanks for watching until the next one talk to you again